great. Whenever you like, Alberto, all yours. Thanks. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the second session. So our next speaker is uh, Raúl Rojas Mejías from uh, Universidad de Concepción. He will be talking about holography of ADS hairy black holes and the hardy berlinde formula. So Raúl, please go ahead. Okay, thanks uh, Alberto for the presentation. It's a pleasure being here online and in this important meeting. Um, I'm going to talk in this occasion um, of some, some concrete aspect of the um, holographic principle between gravitational theories and uh, conformal field theories. This, this talk is based on, on one of my recent uh, articles. And I'm going to talk on the um, some aspect, some particular aspect of the conformal field theory. I'm not um, familiar with, with the conformal field theory, but in, with the gravitational side. So I, I'm going to talk very brief, very briefly on, on this aspect, uh, the Cardi formula, Casimir energy, um, the, the work of the, of the Professor Berlinde in cosmology. And, the, and then I will apply this to, to charge black holes. I will show um, some, well, well, this is a very well known fact, some similarities uh, between conformal field theories and, and black hole physics. And then I will move to the ionic heavy black holes, which is, is very interesting for a particular reason. Okay, so let me, let me start by briefly reviewing the, the work of uh, George, John Cardi. He showed that uh, for, a, for a conformal field theory in, in one plus one dimension, that the entropy can be put in, in this particular form that you see in equation one, where and that number C is the so-called central charge of the conformal field theory, which is a number that, that characterizes the, the particular theory under consideration. Um, this another quantity, L sub zero, is the product of the energy of the system and the radius in which um, the system fits. And this shift that you see here is due to, to the so-called Casimir effect, which comes from quantum fluctuations on, this, on the system. So this all is from the, from the CFT side. And, and this equation is important because it says uh, about um, a bound for the entropy of the system, as you see in, in, this, in this line. Uh, and this reminds um, the holographic principle in the sense that it establishes a, a limit for the entropy of the system. One, one interesting thing is that one, if one replaces this, this central charge of the CS, CFT by um, a Casimir energy, which I'll, I will define properly in the next slide, uh, we obtain a, a, a formula very similar with one, but that can, can be applied in, in the gravitational side in some examples. So this Casimir energy, S sub C, let me introduce how to, to obtain, this is based on the, on the work of Berlinde. So consider um, uh, uh, N plus one dimensional conformal field theory, any, with a, with a central charge, so the system has an energy, has an entropy and a, concrete, um, a volume. And the philosophy is that the energy is not a completely extensive quantity of the entropy and the volume due to these Casimir effects. So we, we write the total energy as an extensive part and a sub-extensive part, which is the Casimir energy. And the extensive part, of course, scales uh, proportional to, to, to the changes in entropy and volume. Lambda here is a factor that changes the entropy and volume. And the sub-extensive part, this is from the CFT side, again, I repeat, the Casimir energy scales differently with a factor lambda uh, to, the, 
two a power that is less than one and depends of the number of dimensions. So one can here derive with respect to, to this factor lambda and set lambda equal to one, equal to one to obtain a, a, rela a complete relation between these quantities. One can use the first law of, of thermodynamics here to recognize these this partial derivatives. And then we can obtain um, a, an equation, which is like a Euler identity between the total energy, the entropy, the temperature, pressure, and volume of the system, and this Casimir energy. So we this provides a, a method to to define to define a Casimir energy in terms of the quantities that define the system and the number of dimension of the CFT. So this equation four is a, a prescription to obtain a Casimir energy for a system in which we know the energy and the other thermodynamic quantities. So so we would like to apply this to to the gravitational side to black holes and see this holographic principle in action. So uh, let me review the, the work of the of Berlinde, this one, in which we in, in which he he studied the um, uh, uh, n plus one dimensional radiation dominate uh, radiation dominated closed Friedman Robinson Walker universe, sorry, in which the radiation is represented by a conformative theory with a given central charge. Okay, so we have here the metric for this expanding universe, the energy momentum tensor in terms of, of the density and pressure. And this is a, brief, um, a very brief um, summary of the results. And he showed that the Friedman equation here in the right hand side, which um, which is described the gravitational side are equivalent. And this is easy to, to see, but this is just a, a summary. These equations are equivalent to, to this, the, to the Cardi formula, which I, I mentioned in the beginning, which is this expression. And the other Friedman equation is equivalent to the definition of the Casimir energy. Of course, this is in the gravitational side. So this, this SH, is some kind of entropy in the gravitational side, the same that this E, um, this, this Bekenstein ent uh, energy, sorry. So this, um, this is the, the holographic principle in, in a concrete example. Of course, some quantities here where, you know, H is the, the scale factor R that, uh, Etc. So let me move to, to black holes, which is the case I want to talk. So um, let me show here or review the, the work of Kai, in which uh, we can obtain the same formula for the entropy in terms of Casimir energy and the total energy of the system. But this calculation is done in, in the gravitational side. So this is the, the interest, the the interesting things here. So let me so start with the with the very well known Rysander Nostrum ADS in D dimensions. So here we have the solution, um, and we can compute the thermodynamic quantities, yeah, right, that satisfy the first law, etc. And here the philosophy is that. If, if we want to describe a CFT theory, uh, oh, we can, since we, we want to compare the CFT with the gravitational side, we need the metric near the boundary or an, ext an expansion of the metric, the rising nostril metric near the boundary. So we have here some conformal factor at a, a finite, uh, at a finite radial coordinate. Um, so this says that we, if we can describe a theory in a, um, in a volume that, uh, of radius r, um, here we need to, to consider another time coordinate, right? To, to obtain a metric uh, 
minus dt uh, on a sphere of radius r. So we need to rescale some, some thermodynamic quantities like the energy, the temperature, and uh, this chemical potential. And this is interesting because the, the first law of, of black hole thermodynamics extends to incorporate a PdV term, which in this case is, is very concrete. And um, once we have the thermodynamic quantities for the gravitational side, we can use the formula uh, obtained before to obtain the Casimir energy, which is, uh, the, Casimir, the, is the Casimir energy from the CFT side, which is in this case, a quantity like this. So in this case, we have all the quantities. It is very easy to check that this equation, which is known as the cardi berlin formula for black holes is indeed satisfied. This is the same equation uh, of the CFT theories, but in this context is satisfied also by, by black holes. So this is the novelty. And in this expression, EQ is the energy of the electromagnetic field that must be subtracted from the total energy. So, so the fact that, that we arrived at the same equation from the gravitational side than an equation in the CFT is very interesting. It's a consequence of the holographic principle. And for Haley black holes, and that, that was uh, my work, and in Haley black holes, the situation is, is more subtle in the sense that uh, we have a scalar field, scalar field uh, that decays in this case for this potential, decays as uh, A over R and B over R squared. These two constant can be related and this is the boundary condition for the scalar field. And the interesting things here is that this um, boundary condition for the scalar field or this general boundary condition can break the conformal symmetry of the gravitational theory. So let me show you what I mean, what I exactly mean. Um, the total action, uh, this is from the gravitational side, of course, the total action, which is uh, regularized, is that uh, is this action that you see with the Gibbons Hawking boundary term, the gravitational counter term, and the boundary term for the scalar field. So um, from this total action, one can construct the boundary stress tensor, which is this quantity that you see here, um, up to um, a rescaling factor, one can construct the, the dual boundary stress tensor, which is the stress tensor that corresponds to the CFT. And when one com compute the trace of this dual stress tensor, one obtain that this trace is not zero. So this uh, means that the, the boundary condition for the scalar field, which, are, which, is this, which are these constant A and B and W, which is a relation between A and B, um, can break, the, right? The, the boundary condition for the scalar field can break the conformal symmetry. So in this case, we showed that the, the thermodynamic quantities from the gravitational, uh, gravitational side uh, cannot be put in the cardi berlin -De formula, which is expected since the conformal symmetry is broken in, in this case. So here is the, what I said. And, um, but, but uh, this is valid for the dionic solution. I, I did not present uh, here the, the concrete solution to make it simple, but when, when one considers just the electrically charged solution, this is uh, the case where the magnetic charge is zero. In this case, the, um, the boundary conditions for the scalar field does not break the, the conformal symmetry since this quantity is zero just for the electrically charged Lou and Pop solution. And in this case, when the conformal symmetry is recovered, one can indeed put the entropy in the Cardi Berlin -De formula, which is in this case the quantity that you see, the equation, the final equation there. So it, in um, it was a very concrete work, but it is it is interesting to see a concrete or see concrete examples 
where the, the holographic principle is, is clear uh, in the context of gravitational theories and CFTs. So this is the what I wanted to, to talk in this in this in this talk. So thank you. I don't know if 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 there are, there is any comment or thank you, Raul. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> we have questions from the audience. 